Hello everybody. In this video lecture, we continue covering joints. This is chapter 8, part 2. So I just want to remind you that we can classify joints based on their structural characteristics and functional characteristics. Structural characteristic is just type of material that binding bones together and um, joints can be fibrous, cartilaginous or synovial and functional characteristic based on degree of movement. Uh, thin arthrosis, amphiarthrosis, diarthrosis, non-movable, slightly movable and freely movable. And synovial joints are all diarthrotic, freely movable, and include all limb joints and most joints of the body. And we have a major uh, type of synovial joints here, pivot, hinge, saddle, ball and socket, condyloid, plane joint. And we discuss all of this joint in chapter 8, part 1. In this chapter, we're going to talk about movements at synovial joints, right? So let's say if we have plain joint, it allow gliding movement. Or if we have hinge joint, it allow flexion and extension. So and so on. So we will talk about type of movements. It can be gliding, angular movements, including flexion, extension, hyperextension, abduction, adduction, circumduction, and a rotation. It can be medial or lateral rotation. Plus, we have special movements, supination, pronation, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion of the foot, inversion, eversion, protraction, retraction, elevation, depression, opposition. So you guys do need to know the name of different movements. So gliding movements. One flat bone surface glides or slips over another similar surface. Example would include intercarpal joints, intertarsal joints, and between articular processes of vertebra. Angular movement, flexion, extension, and hyperextension. Uh, angular movements occur along the sagittal plane, and flexion decreases the angle between two bones, right? Angle of the joint. So, extension increases the angle between bones or angle of the joint, and hyperextension is excessive extension beyond normal range of movement, or we can say beyond anatomical position. So over here you can see flexion, extension, and hyperextension of the neck, right? So neck goes down, you decrease the angle, so that would be flexion, goes up, extension, beyond anatomical position, hyperextension. This is angular movement, flexion, extension, and hyperextension of the vertebral column, right? You bend your body, you extend, you can hyperextend. This is also angular movement, flexion, extension at the shoulder and knee. Flexion, extension, um, your arm goes up, flexion, right? goes down, extension. Angular movement that occur along a frontal plane is abduction, adduction, and circumduction. Um, abduction movement away from the midline. Uh, abduction, the word abduction means taking away, right? If somebody is abducted, that means this person is taking away. So if you take away, let's say, your arm away from midline, Adduction, you're adding it, so you're going towards the midline. And circumduction, if you use your arm and try to draw circle uh, in the air, that's movement that allow you to draw a big circle, that would be circumduction. And it includes flexion, abduction, extension, and adduction at the same time. Rotation. 
Rotation is the turning of a bone along its own long axis. An example between C1 and C2, or rotation of humerus and femur. So you can rotate your head, right? And it can be lateral rotation or medial rotation. You can rotate your arm, you can rotate your um, leg, right? So femur or humerus. Special movements. Special movements only apply to just the specific parts of your body. Let's say supination and pronation only relative to the radius of a ulna. And this is supination when your palm is up. And this is pronation, turning hand down. Right, so, um, and remember, it's like you holding your palm up, like you holding a bowl of soup, right? That's supination. And no, it's, it's not very scientific, but that's what allow me to remember it. You're just holding a bowl of soup, so that's a supination. You turn it, and that would be pronation. Movement of the foot. In the foot, it's interesting. We don't have extension. We have only flexion. We flex it upward, and it will be dorsiflexion, or we flex it downward, it will be plantar flexion. Just remember, for your foot, there is no extension. Both flexion. Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. Special movement of the foot, inversion turn soul medially or eversion uh, turn soul laterally. Um, special movement, a protraction and retraction. Um, so you can see over here, protraction of the mandible, kind of push your mandible anteriorly to the front or retraction of mandible. You also can do it with your tongue. You stick your tongue out, that will be protraction of the tongue. You put your tongue back in your oral cavity, that will be retraction. So anterior and posterior movements. Elevation and depression, also example of the mandible, right? That's elevated mandible, this is depressed mandible. You can also elevate or depress your um, scapula. A position only of the thumb. It's a movement in a saddle joint so that the thumb touches the tips of each other finger. So you touch each finger with the thumb, that will be a position. Common joint injuries. Sprains. Sprains happen when ligaments are stretched or torn. Collagen fibers in the ligament are damaged. Partially, um, those tears slowly repair themselves, and complete rupture requires surgical repair. And we have different grade based on a, a degree of this uh, damage, right? So it can be grade one sprain, grade two sprain, and grade three sprain when we have complete tear. Cartilage tears. Due to compression or shear stress, fragments may cause a joint to lock or bind. The cartilage is a vascular, a vascular tissue, so it's a rarely repair itself, and that's a required um, surgery. So here you can see a torn meniscus. Um, Another common uh, injuries include luxation and subluxation. So luxation is dislocation. It occurs when bones are forced out of uh, alignment, uh, accompanied by sprains, inflammation, and joint immobilization caused by serious falls or, spray, uh, or playing sports. And subluxation is partial dislocation of the joints. So luxation or subluxation. So over here you see healthy joint. This is subluxation and luxation or dislocation. Bursitis is inflammation of bursa, 
usually caused by a blow or friction. And here you can see Alecran on Bursa, that's a normal one. This is inflamed Alecran on Bursa, so that's a bursitis. And this is how the elbow of a patient would look like. And treat it with rest and ice and, if severe, anti-inflammatory drugs. Tendonitis, inflammation of tendon sheath, typically caused by overuse and symptoms and treatment similar to bursitis. So rest, cold, maybe some anti-inflammatory drugs. Arthritis. Arthritis is more than 100 different types of inflammatory or degenerative diseases that damage joints. Uh, it's actually very common and very uh, painful, severe disease in the U.S. Symptoms include pain, stiffness, swelling of a joint. Acute form can be caused by bacteria and treated with antibiotics. Uh, chronic forms include osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and gouty arthritis. So here's the healthy joint. This is example of osteoarthritis, and this is example of rheumatoid arthritis. And we will talk about it a little bit in, in details right now. So here you can see also x-ray of normal hand, rheumatoid arthritis, and osteoarthritis. So here's one type of the arthritis, osteoarthritis, OA. It's a common irreversible degenerative arthritis. It's called wear and tear and probably related to the normal aging process. 85% uh, of all Americans will develop OA and more women than men. In OA, more cartilage is destroyed than replaced in badly aligned or overworked joints. Exposed bone and thickens enlarge form bone spurs and restrict movement. Right, so over your life, you use your joint and of course it has some effect on, a, on the structure of the cartilage, structure of the bones, right? And treatment will include uh, moderate activity, uh, maybe some pain relievers or some medication. It can be some over-counter medication or something that your physician will prescribe for you. RA, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic inflammatory autoimmune disease of unknown case. And as any autoimmune disease, that means that your own immune system starts attacking parts of your body. In RA, your immune system attacking your synovial joints. Usually arises between age 40 and 50, but may occur at any age. Affects three times as many women than as men. And signs and symptoms include pain, swelling, anemia, osteoporosis, muscle weakness, and even cardiovascular problems. RA begins with synovitis, and this is inflammation of synovial membrane. Remember, synovial membrane is a part of the joint capsule or synovial capsule. So when you have inflammation, that means that your cells start releasing inflammatory chemicals. These inflammatory chemicals make this synovial membrane thick and it's turned into a panus. This panus erodes cartilage, um, scar tissue is formed, and uh, the bones, right, articulating bone ends, they connect to each other. So treatment would include uh, conservative therapy, uh, we can use aspirin, long-term use of antibiotics, some physical therapy. It can be also progressive treatment, anti-inflammatory drugs, and immunosuppressants. Uh, also, new biological response is available to neutralize those inflammatory chemicals. So you pretty much what you're trying to do, you just try to deal with inflammation, right? Because all this... Um, you know, treatments that we mentioned, 
it just reduces the inflammatory process, but it doesn't really fix the problem. Gouty arthritis. Um, gouty arthritis is deposition of uric acid crystals in joints and soft tissue followed by inflammation. And uric acid is formed when your body digests nucleic acid. And nucleic acid, I'm reminding you, it's DNA, RNA. Every time you eat, and especially, you know, we have lots of nuclei and lots of DNA product in meat, right? Because remember, skeletal muscle cells, they are multinucleated. So a lot of DNA, that, you know, cow DNA, now you get when you eat steak. Now you break down, you digest this um, nucleic acid and uric acid is a product of uh, metabolism. So people with goatee arthritis they have this uric acid deposited in their joints. This is more common in men and typically affects the joint at the base of the great toe. Um, if goatee uh, arthritis is untreated, the bone ends fuse and immobilize the joint. Treatment include drugs, plenty of water, and avoidance of alcohol. And this is our last slide. So you can see um, how goatee arthritis look like on a patient, and this is how x-ray would uh, what x-ray would show you. So you see here you have a deposition of the uric acid. Okay, so that's the last slide and we finished chapter 8, joints. Make sure you also watch the first part and I hope it was helpful.